Hi, I'm Tom Kalinske. Uh, I'm chairman of Global Education Learning, and I'm the former CEO of LeapFrog and Sega and Mattel, so I've been messing around with trying to make different curriculums fun and interesting for a, for a lot of years. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you the founders of Lightyear, uh, some guys who are going to make particle physics fun and interesting. So uh, on the far side here, we have Peter Westerbacher. Yep. And Peter, uh, Peter was with Rovio. Some of you know Rovio as the Angry Birds company. They did something like four billion in sales. Uh, very successful product, obviously. And he was the brand builder, and his title was the Mighty Eagle at, yep. Yep. at Rovio. And in the middle, we have Laurie Jarvietto. And uh, Laurie uh, is an educator, and he's also uh, a PhD in philosophy, or it's theoretical philosophy, but he says all philosophy is theoretical. So, and he's also the author of some learning books, uh, one titled Fun Learning. So uh, what got you guys interested in applying what you know to making education fun? Yeah, I mean, of course, coming from uh, making games. So uh, at some point, uh, we realized that what we have with our games is, of course, engagement. And uh, that's something that you need uh, to make learning happen. And uh, kind of like then being in, in Finland, so then we decided that, uh, I mean, we happen to have some of the best uh, kind of like game designers and best pedagogues uh, like hanging around there. So uh, why not like uh, combine the two? And uh, then we also, uh, at the same time, we had some discussions with uh, CERN, you know, the guys in Geneva who run this massive collider. And uh, yeah, then we just uh, kind of like one thing led to another, and uh, we decided to make particle physics popular. Yeah. How about you, Lai? <laughs> well, I mean, Finland, um, obviously, like, you know, Finland is a superpower in both education and game design, yeah. like, even though we're like a stamp-sized country in the middle of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we found out, well, I mean, like, I think like 10% of the entire mobile gaming market is produced by Finnish companies. So it's like, you know, it's a huge chunk for a very small country. And we found out that kids play on average about two hours every day. And we started thinking, like, you know, whether we could actually take a chunk of those two hours and redirect it to something, you know, that's actually good for them. And that's kind of like how we ended up starting a learning game studio. Hmm. Well, and by the way, the, some of you may not be aware that the video game industry today is a $100 billion industry, if you include uh, mobile, but only about 2% of that is educational games, uh, so uh, only a couple billion. However, the prediction is that it's going to more than double in the next few years because of the high interest in educational games. Uh, but you mentioned Finland a little bit, and I know you're talking about this later on, but can you briefly describe what's the difference between the Finnish education system and the U.S. education system? Yeah, I think that there are many differences, but, uh, but I think maybe the most important thing is, uh, and again, I, mean, I have no formal background in like, uh, uh, education or anything like that, but uh, I have two kids, so I guess that makes me a bit of an expert. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we have uh, very short school days and uh, very little homework, so it means that kids have school and a life. And uh, I think now, uh, if you look at then, uh, uh, okay, if you look at then like the Asian model where you have like school and uh, more school and they basically very long school days, a uh, lot of homework, so you have like school and maybe no life. So I think that the Finnish model, uh, I think that it really starts with, uh, with kind of like uh, the belief that, you know, like kids are people too. Uh, so, uh, you know, they, they have, uh, you know, Alive, and and uh, and I think that that that's uh, maybe the starting point. And then I think also uh, uh, it's about trust. So I mean, we trust the kids, but also uh, most importantly, we trust the teachers to do their job. And uh, I mean, as we just heard in the previous discussion, that uh, of course you know, like every uh, person on the planet can learn pretty much anything. And I, I think that that's also uh, one thing that is very true, kind of like in the Finnish school system, that we also believe that that it's not about educating, you know, like. Uh, random few people, uh, you know, in, in, uh, you know uh, based on uh, where they live or something like that. I mean, all our schools are, are fantastic. And uh, as a parent, you don't need to worry about, you know, where you live and where you put your kids to school. I mean, uh, just put them in any school in Finland and they'll end up great. So, so I think that that's uh, also something that's very, very important. And, and of course, I mean, in Finland, we're only 5 million people. So uh, we have to educate everybody to come at like, uh, a very high level. And, and I think that that education is then why we had some success in like games, and we made uh, Linux and MySQL and a bunch of these open source things happen. So we kind of like been punching above our weight. 
Yeah. You want to add anything to that, Lori? Well, I mean, if you want to summarize it in a very kind of like short form, like it's, uh, I think the secret sauce in Finnish uh, education is inclusivity. Everybody gets to go to a great school regardless of the income level of their parents uh, and trust. So we trust, like mm. Peter said, we trust the kids, we trust the teachers. And if you take a look at like, you know, how that like stacks up, there are basically two kinds of well-performing educational systems on the planet. So there's the Finnish model and there's the Asian model. And the Finnish model actually lets people to grow up being like, you know, well-balanced, happy individuals and also capable to perform in the modern world. Whereas in the Asian model, I mean, you have to put in so, so hard hours that it becomes hyper competitive. And even though the overall performance is good, there's also a ton of people left behind. And that's kind of like, I still don't believe that the Finnish way, I mean, because obviously we also have problems. So, I mean, the Finnish way is not like, you know, a free ticket to utopia or anything like that. Yeah. We still need to take a look, you know, take a harder look at what, what works in Finland, what works elsewhere, and sort of figure out, I think, what's going on here at, at the summit. Figure out what's the best of both worlds scenario. Yeah. What are the best practices we, we can bring to, to play everywhere in the world, in the US, in the UK, like in Finland also, and we have a lot to learn from one another. Am, am I wrong in saying that you also pay your teachers reasonably well? Uh, we don't pay them like particularly well. I mean, we you know pay them uh, kind of like a, a good salary, so uh, you know they can afford to live where they want, yeah. and uh, you know they can feed their families. So, but it's not like we pay them uh, massively. And I don't think that it's about pay. I mean, it's it's more about uh, the fact that we kind of like respect the teachers. It's a good job. Every year we have uh, tens of thousands of kids who want to become teachers, but they can't because it's very tough to get into the university to become a teacher. So I think it's like a combination of many things. But one thing, I mean, on this like, uh, uh, kind of like US system, Finnish system and all of that, but I think uh, maybe also it's not just about education, but I mean, in Finland, uh, we're like big believers in like the American dream. So, I mean, we decided to make it real. And uh, again, uh, you know, so we have uh, very high social mobility, so you can be born, you know, rich or poor, and you can like end up doing anything. Uh, so it's always fun to, you know, watch the discussion here in the U.S. where we always get these arguments that only in America can, you know, a secretary become a CEO or whatever. I mean, it happens in Finland like all the time and at massive scale. So uh, again, uh, I think with education, we can also bring like the American dream back to America. So I think that's something that uh, we're more than happy to do. <laughs> Okay, let's get into uh, Big Bang Legends. Laurie, what is stealth learning, and can you really make particle physics fun and interesting? Uh, well, first of all, particle physics is fun and interesting. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, uh, this is actually a very important point, because, I mean, again, when you look at games and, like, where we come from, I mean, it's not... Uh, people don't think that games are difficult. And, and again, you know, like if you take, you know, like uh, everybody with kids, uh, you know, uh, if you take Pokemon Go and, uh, you know, Pokemon, I mean, kids know uh, hundreds of Pokemons by heart. And I mean, why is that? They learned, they played the games. Uh, and then, of course, you can argue that, okay, but it's like, you know, it's not very useful to know like all of these Pokemon. And, uh, and actually, you learn from like all games. Uh, so in Finland, uh, boys speak better English than girls. Do you know why? because they play games and the games are in English. So it's not like the boys decided one day that, okay, let's speak better you know, English than the girls, but they actually end up that way because they play games. And, and I think that this is a very, very important, and it was great to hear like the previous discussion, that of course you can learn anything, and kids don't know that particle physics is supposed to be like yeah. difficult and not so exciting. Yeah. So, Laura, you want to talk about it? So, well, I think like, you know, you mentioned stealth learning, which is one of the key concepts that we're operating with. So actually, if you, think, if you take a look at how learning happens, anything that keeps your attention fixed for a prolonged uh, amount of time engenders learning. So actually, attention and engagement are key to any learning experience. And like Peter said, every game is actually a great learning experience. Sure. The problem is that like, you know, with Pokemon, you learn about like, Pikachu sure. being an electric Pokemon. With Angry Birds, you learn about like, you know, the blue bird splitting into three. That's not learning. It's actually how we're rewiring yeah. the stuff in our brain. But what happens, like, you know, when you actually, like, what we did, we teamed up with experts from CERN, from Oxford, uh, like, you know, from various, like, super uh, institutions, and built a team of the best game designers on the planet to make a game about particle physics. And now these kids are playing this game, and we play tested it in, it, it in uh, dozens of schools, and what happens is after they've played it for 45 minutes or so, they kind of, like, you know, we ask them, like, so what, how was it? And these are kids who, when we start the playtesting, we can't even tell what an, an, what an atom is. So afterwards, after 45 minutes, we asked these kids, like, so did you learn anything? And they go, like, well, not really. I mean, it was a fun game. It was we fun. Had, yeah, it was fun. Like, you know, can I play more? 
But like, you know, we didn't really learn anything. So we start pulling these kids. We start asking them question, how many cores do you need uh, to build a proton? These are nine-year-old kids. Everybody raises their hand. How many cores? You guys, how many cores do you need to build a proton? Raise your hands, show of hands. There's like one, one sort of like meek hand there. <laughs> You need three quarks to make a proton. Every single one of these kids know. You ask them, can you name like five atoms in the periodic table? They go like boron, beryllium, uh, vanadium, uh, manganese, helium. And you ask them, like, you know, how many protons do you need to make a helium atom? Well, two, obviously. Doesn't everybody <laughs> know you need two protons to make a helium atom? And this is just after 45 minutes of gameplay. Because it's all embedded in the gameplay. Because it's all embedded in the, fun, in the magic that our game designers are weaving in our studio. So now if they play for two weeks, what happens is they start learning about bosons and fermions and, and, and like, you know, gluons and, and, and the standard model of particle physics and this like, you know, whole shebang that like Peter said, like, you know, that we think it's difficult. And we had a great discussion like at the backstage where like, you know, it was said that basically like, you know, this whole idea that science is difficult is wrong. Yeah. Science is not difficult. Science is amazing. And these kids don't know they're not supposed to know about particle physics. So it's easy for them to learn it if their attention yeah. is kept up. But, but, but this actually brings up a very important point that, that the reason why, if you now look at like learning games and why it's like such a tiny market compared to like all of games, uh, everybody with kids also knows that if you give them like Angry Birds or Pokemon and a learning game, what will the kids play? 10 out of 10 times they'll play Angry Birds. I mean, it's just they, they know what they're doing. Uh, but with our game and what we're coming from is that we don't use learning an excuse, as an excuse for making like a bad game. So uh, we have to make a fantastic game and the kids don't even realize that they are actually having a particle physics lesson. So they just play the game and then it's kind of like stealth learning, so they don't even realize that, hey, now they learn about the quarks and the protons and, you know, names of atoms and like all of that. So I think it's very, very important that uh, you have to uh, create games that are fantastic games first and foremost, and then the learning happens. So, so this is something that we now see with uh, Big Bang Legends, and, and it's very consistent. I mean, we tested this now in Singapore, in Hong Kong, uh, in Finland, and uh, every single time, uh, the same thing happens. But what is maybe the most important thing is that the teachers always tell us that, wow, they've never seen the kids learn so much yeah. so fast. Let's take a look at yeah. uh, a little bit of the, the game, if we can. Yeah. So here, here's a video of a playtesting session we did in Singapore about a month ago uh, on March 20, 22nd at the Stanford American School, uh, which is a pretty amazing school in Singapore where we all already started playtesting in September. So we figured like, you know, it's better than like, you know, us waxing poetic about these effects to show you what it actually looks like when nine-year-olds yeah. are learning particle physics. So here we go. Students are super excited about and engaged about science learning. It's the first time I'm seeing them learning so much in, a, in such a short time. It's amazing. I'm mind blown. I like all the characters because they're really like fun and like many ideas. Every time you unlock the character, they tell you the name and they tell you about like the strength and stuff. I just loved how there was just endless levels going and going because like you get so addicted to it and you're like, oh my god, I want to go to the next level. So the, you've launched in Singapore and Hong Kong. Can you talk about what you've learned? What are the statistics? And how much learning is going on? Uh, involvement? What are the teachers saying? We saw a little bit there. Yeah. So, uh, so we launched in Singapore and Hong Kong. So Singapore at the end of March. Hong Kong actually just this Tuesday, uh, a week ago. Uh, and uh, so what, we, what we're seeing, so in Singapore and also in, in Vietnam and Philippines, and huh. the game immediately got to like number one educational game. So even though like, you know, the gaming market is like, hyper-competitive, there seems to be some kind of like, you know, demand for this kind of product. Uh, kids in schools, this, like what you see on the video, it happens in every single school, whether it's Singapore, Slovakia, Finland, Hong Kong, everywhere we went and play tested. Like kids, they just, some, they just go like, oh, is this learning? Can I actually learn like this? And the teachers go like, hey, I, I would actually love to have the class this excited all the time. 
So, so this is what we're seeing. We also ran an efficacy evaluation by this uh, entity in Finland called Coco, who are running like, you know, especially they're focused on evaluating the learning efficacy of edtech products. And they found out that the stealth learning is actually highly effective in the game. So even very, like, like we've seen the playtesting ourselves, even in very short uh, sessions, kids will learn a substantial amount of like, information about particle physics. And um, where are you going next? Where are you launching next? When do we get it here in the United States? Um, so we're launching Finland next week, uh, our home, home, home country. Uh, then we're doing East Europe in June, uh, focusing on Slovakia. And uh, Central Europe uh, in July, we're going to have a big event at CERN at the beginning of July. Uh, and then we're going to go for a summer holiday and like, enjoy life and do, you know, do it like the Finns do. <laughs> and in September, we're going to come to the US. And, well, and I know today when US. you're doing video games, you're obviously iterating all along the way. Um, what, have, what have you learned? What, I mean, what have you changed since you've launched? What, what surprised you in, the, in this, this process of uh, developing the game? Well, I think the biggest finding we had was that in the beginning we had, especially me and Peter, we talked a lot about like, you know, that like, we, you know, because we could see like, in the research we did back in Robio days, we could see that games are an amazing platform for learning. And we envisioned that maybe we can make a game that like, you know, you'll start with nothing and you'll end up with a PhD or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out like, you know, that we were maybe a tad too ambitious with that idea. <laughs> Uh, we learned, uh, this was actually a realization by our co-founder, Lauri Kontori, who is the person who's actually designed these characters and created this world, who previously like, you know, created the Angry Birds universe, like you know, the backstory for Angry Birds. So Lauri came up with this idea that actually like games, you can't do everything with games, because it's like making a great game is really hard. Really hard. And if you want to make a great game about a particular topic, like particle, so, so you know, particle physics is not hard. Making great games is hard. Yes. So that's like you know, that's the, the philosophy. But if you want to combine the two, it's super hard. And now, if if you want to cater for everybody for everything, it doesn't work. But actually, games are amazing because once again, attention engenders learning. Games are amazing in sparking that attention, sparking that like, whoa, this could be interesting. Learning a bit about like you know the basic literacy of science. And then when you go to school. And the teacher pulls down the, like, you know, the, 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 the periodic table, the table of elements from, like, in, roof, in Finland, we actually had these things they pulled down from the roof, which was, like, you know, hyper-intimidating experience for, like, you know, 11-year-old kid, like, you know, when the teacher goes, whoop, and then there's 118, like, little, like, Latin names and their abbreviations, and so let's start learning, everybody. <laughs> but these kids, when they go out there, they're not going to see, like, MG and LI and, 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 like, you know, potassium and la, la, la they're going to see Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And so we realized that instead of catering for everybody, we actually have to work with the entire educational system and this whole arc of learning from zero to PhD. And our place is at the beginning. Yeah. Our place is in sparking and showing people that these things are amazing, they're fun, they're not hard to learn. And then the teachers, when they have a classroom full of kids who don't see MG and LI and potassium and, and vanadium, but they see Pokemon, for the teachers, it's going to be a whole different experience in starting to explain and going in deeper into this. So what, what you're really doing is you're, you're taking the fear factor away from kids. You're getting them interested in particle physics. I wish the heck you were around when I was taking particle physics and chemistry. And, and by the way, are you going to go on and do the other sciences as well? Yeah, yeah, and, and of course, I mean, uh, the reason why it's called Big Bang Legends, because it's kind of like all, everything started with the Big Bang. Uh, so we start with particle physics, but then, you know, uh, after atoms, we do molecules, so we, you know, like, uh, we'll get to chemistry, biology, geography, and, and so on. So, the, of course, the plan is to do uh, pretty much everything and, and build kind of like a full curriculum, if you will, with, uh, with games. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, I think one thing that is fantastic with games and what we learned kind of like with, uh, with Angry Birds and all that, that we can reach a uh, massive audience. So with Angry Birds, we got to like 4 billion downloads and, and you know, counting. Uh, so we also think that uh, the opportunity here is, is to really kind of like set learning free, if you will, and, and uh, you know, learning is kind of like getting out of control, that kids are now learning, you know, not only in the classroom, but, uh, you know, in, uh, in, their, in their homes and like in the streets and everywhere. So, so I think that that's uh, really what we see happening going forward, that we don't really we, we don't want to reach just like a, a few uh, people, but we want to reach hundreds of millions of people. And, and uh, that's why I was kind of like jokingly saying that we want to make particle physics popular. But actually, people will hopefully play the game, 
they will play it because it's a great game, and then as a side effect, they just happen to learn the periodic table without like knowing it. One last question. Um, your marketing is going to be to consumers, not to schools initially, but you assume a lot of teachers will pick it up along the way. Uh, how, how, how are you marketing and what else are you doing? I know you're doing a card game. What else are you doing in marketing? So uh, we are we're selling to schools. So it's a B2C product. You can download it from the app stores uh, in the countries where we've launched. Uh, however, we, are, we want to cater for the teacher. So once again, we want to be the sort of missing link in this arc of learning. And that means that we want to give the game with the additional, like, you know, we have a subscription for this, what we call the quote-unquote learn-to-play content, which is high-level, like, deep learning content we've developed together with Oxford and CERN. And, and, and we want to give all that for free to schools, libraries, and educational institutions. So we have an EDU version of the game, which has the subscription mode auto-enabled, like, indefinitely. And any school who wants to carry that, any school district who wants to carry that, just send us an email. We'll set you up with the code that you can unlock the EDU version with. Um, and the reason is that even though the game, I mean, we envision what Peter said, that we want to put this into the hands of hundreds of millions of kids around the world. And if you think about like, what that will do to our worldview, like, you know, putting the whole like, idea that like, you know, science is fun, the scientific understanding to millions of hands, it's going to change the way we think about the world. Mm -hmm. But still, also, we want to be of as much use as possible for the teacher, for the educational institutions, and that's why we're doing that. And by the way, uh, if you want to check the game out, we are actually going to have a playtesting session at Little America at 2 p.m. today. 2 so we'll be today. there with Peter with a couple of iPads. So if you actually want to like, start learning particle physics today, please, you know, you're right. welcome to join us and try it out. Yeah, and, and, and the short answer to like the marketing question is that of course uh, you know we're, we're not uh, like happy to only making fantastic games. We'll also apply fantastic marketing. So yeah. you'll you'll know when we get to the U.S. with Big Bang Legends. So don't worry about that. <laughs> okay, well that's all the time we have. Thanks very much, guys. Hey, thank, thank you. you.